In my last video, I set up a brand new home sear home troller Pi, and I defined three Z-Wave devices, a wall moat and two bulbs, and I created some events that uh, have some schedules, and I also created some actions based on wall moat buttons just to test it out. And uh, I also described what the next step was, is to say, all right, how do I talk to other things? So, and that all revolves around plugins. And today I'm going to show how to install the MNS Insteon plugin. So you can go to the store and it shows you all the details around this. It is an extra $59.95 but it is well worth it if you have an Insteon investment in your house and you want to use them. This is the absolute best technical solution that I've found because it lets you use your Insteon hub. See right here, it says it works with the Insteon hub. Otherwise it does work with PLMs, but PLMs are extremely expensive and you can only get them on eBay these days. So you probably already have a hub and this solution works with it. It is worth noting at this point that the Insteon plugin is provided and supported by a third party named Mark Sandler. It's not a home seer product. The exclusive method for support of this plugin is through the home seer forum that I've linked in the video description below. I'm going to just come over to my plugin management and say install. Oh, that didn't take long at all. I didn't even need to pause. Okay, at this point, I can turn it on. Now it says the plugin is okay. 30 days on a trial is left, which is really nice because you can actually try this out and make sure it works for you. You can get this set up in no time actually, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now I'm gonna come over to the support forum link. This is the support forum for MNS Insteon. And read this first is getting started with MNS Insteon plugins. So these are the steps that I'm gonna be following. You have to have an Insteon Hub or an Insteon PLM to work with HomeSeer. If you have a PLM, skip. Otherwise, we're going to go to step zero. The first thing you need to do is figure out the IP address of your hub. So I happen to have a, an Amplify system here. And I went into the device list. And if I scroll down, I have this smart home device. Now I've already changed the icon, by the way, so it looks like an Insteon hub. <laughs> but I also have this, this is the IP address for it, and it is a static IP address. So I know that is what it is. It's 192.168.1.64, and that is not going to change. So to test that, I'm going to go to 192.168.1.64. colon 25105. That's exactly what it said in this reading in this getting started guide. And that's also a port that's listed on the bottom of your hub. Now there's also credentials listed on the bottom of your hub and you're going to need to know those. Now since I've already done this, it comes up pre-populated here. So I'm just going to click sign in. Once you enter the credentials exactly as they appear on the bottom of your hub, you will get a screen like this that verifies that your hub is in working condition so you can proceed now once you have the plugin installed you can go to the plugin manage page which i did already okay and here it's going to say use this is your example and you're going to put this in the interface port field so i'm going to come over here i'm going to put that in there but i know mine is 64. so make sure you put in whatever your IP address is for your hub. Okay, after putting that in, I'm gonna click Save. And here's where it asks for my username and password. And again, I'm gonna put the same ones in that are on the bottom label of my hub. Okay, so that's the username and password. And then I'm gonna click Save. So here I've contacted hub with that IP address. This is what the Insteon address is known as, and my firmware version. What I've done is I went into the interface link table for my hub, and it takes a while, but it retrieves all this data. 
and you can see there's 55 links that were in my hub. Now, these are my existing devices with existing links, and I don't have any, many devices in my house. I have two keypads and three dimmers. That's it right now, and a leak sensor. But what I can get from this, and the reason why you want this, is they want you to take this information because you're going to need to know the numbers so that you can set them up right here in HomeSeer. So what you want to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to create a new Google Sheet. And then I'm going to copy this table. Okay. Now, you can see here it says data legend, byte one, and, and this is a little bit, sorry if it's a little bit technical, but you know that every Insteon device has this three byte, and I'm sorry to use the term byte. If you're not a programmer, you don't understand what a byte is, and I get that. It's, it's a number, but it's a hexadecimal number. So you see this 6C, that translates into a decimal number, but just understand that there's actually a device ID and it's on the bottom or next to or whatever on every Insteon device that has a device ID. And it's this three, I'm just going to call it a six digit, <laughs> six digit device ID separated by dots. So 35.89.6C is one of them, okay? Because it says byte three to five are the device ID. So skip the E2, skip the 11. This is the device ID. So you can see these are all the same. These four have the same device ID, all right? And that's a different device ID. So from this, you could gather all of the device IDs that you want. I've created a column here, a heading of device IDs. So I'm going to come into each one of these and I'm going to say, okay, 358970. Copy that, bring it over here. This is the same device. Oh, this is a different device. Copy that, put it over here. Now I'm going to do this for all of my devices. All right, now that I have my list of devices, I can come over here again and let's see what it says. So that was step seven. Click display interface links, copy and paste this information into a document. I did that. Now, optional, run the plugin interface reset routine to clear out the Insteon hub link database or perform a factory reset on the hub. This will erase old schedules as well. So I do recommend doing this, quite honestly. You may have lots of devices that may have stopped working, whatever the case may be, and those defunct devices are still defined in your hub. I really recommend resetting every device in your house and starting fresh. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. All right, resetting the Insteon hub is really easy. All you're gonna do is remove it from power and then push and hold that little button on the back and plug it back in. And just keep holding the button until the beeping stops. Then you could let it go. Beeps once. And then it beeps a couple of times and it is done. It's ready to go. So I regenerated my interface link table from the hub and you can see here it has no links in it. That's because I reset it. So everything is fresh on the hub and now I can actually start resetting my devices. All right, I've got one of these lamp dimmers here and I wanna reset it, factory reset it. And all of the devices, whether it be the hub or anything else, they get reset by holding down the set button and re putting them back into power, you know, reconnecting to power. But I'm going to plug in a light bulb here so that it has a load on it, so we'll be able to see what happens. So I'm gonna click that button and hold it while I plug it into this extension cord here. And just like the hub, when it's done beeping, there you go and the load goes on. All right, now that device is now reset. And this is device 3E6A7B. So now I can go and define this to my hub.
Now I'm in the Devices tab here, and I want to add my first device, which is that plug-in dimmer. So this one right here is that device. I'm going to call this Spare Lamp Dimmer. I'm just going to write that down here. And that way I know that's the one in my office. I'm not actually using it, but I'm just going to use it for a demonstration. So let me see if I take that and I come over here and I put that in. You can see it puts the dots in for me. I'm going to call this my Spare Lamp Dimmer. LD. And the location is my office. Now I'm going to add that device. Okay, it has been programmed. I click continue. And let me go back to the device list. And here you can see Office Spare LD has been created. And if I come into my device list, you'll see I have an Insteon Devices group controller, which I'm going to ignore, but I have my spare lamp dimmer here. And this is just happens to be the way that it is defined. It, um, it You'll see it with some of my other devices. Sometimes there's multiple entities within each device itself. In this case, it has the root and it has only one controllable outlet. If it had multiple controllable outlets, you'd see them listed here underneath that root. So in any case, I've got that. I can now click on and my light goes on. All right. Uh, this device, for some reason, is not working. And I know some of you have said the same thing, that you've had some problems with that. So what I'm going to try now is to actually restart my system. And I'm going to see how that works. And I'll be back. Okay, so the system was restarted, and now when I click the on button, it actually goes on. So if you do run into flaky situations where something's not responding, don't worry about it. Just restart your system and give it another try. And now everything looks good. So now I need to do the rest of my devices. Now to reset these keypad dimmers, there's a little little button, that little lighted button down the bottom there. You gotta get your fingernail underneath it if you can okay pull it out and it turns the power off and then when you push it back in you got to hold the button until it beeps and let it go and it's reset Okay, the last device that I need to reset is my Insteon leak sensor. And the first thing that I need to do is take the battery out, which means I have to pry the bottom off. Open that up, remove the battery, and wait five seconds. Okay, there's no beeper in this, so you have to have sight of that little light right there. So what I need to do is push and hold that button right there as I put the battery back in. And then watch that light and it'll light up solid and then go out. And when it goes out, it's reset. There you go. Pop that back on and it's ready to go. All right, so we're back in my spreadsheet. I went and I reset all those devices, and when I had the lamp dimmers out, I made note of which IDs were where. So there's one on my oven side, the cabinets control in the oven. There are cabinets by the stove, and then there are cabinets in that area that I call a drop zone coming in from the garage. And of course, I reset the leak sensor, and I can see what the number is on the bottom of the leak sensor. Now the other two, these are the keypads. One is in my kitchen, and one is controlling my island. So they're basically all, they're both kind of in the kitchen, I guess you could say. But I'm not sure. Let's just say I'm not sure. Now, I know because I've done this before and I know which devices are which, but let's say you don't and you have a long laundry list of devices and you don't know what they are. That's okay. We're just going to add them and then I could test them right from within Home Seer. Just click on, see which device goes on, and then you know. The other alternative is for dimmers and things like that you can there's usually a label right on the front you just have to take off the plate the wall plate and you can see what the number is right on the device itself all right so now i'm going to take each one of these 
just like I did before, and I'm going to add these devices. Okay, now you can see I have all of my lamp dimmers defined. Now, for those other two keypads, there's another way to actually add them, and especially in a situation where you don't know what they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say tap add the device. And when I do that, I'm going to go and push that little set button on the bottom of the device, and it will add the one that the first one I'm going to do is my island keypad. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I'm going to push and hold this button here. And now we should be good. When using tap add, you can walk around and add several devices at once. But when you come back, it's important to follow these instructions on the screen, especially step number two, which is to program the device for home seer. If you forget to do that, the device status won't update in home seer, and it won't trigger any of your home seer events. Okay, let's see if that added my device. Okay, here you can see I have an unknown tap added dual band keypad link. So it knows what type of device it is. And so it actually shows up in my device list with a whole bunch of buttons because it's an eight button keypad. So it knows just by tapping it what kind of device it is. So that's a really good thing. Now, just for comparison, I'm using the device ID to manually add my second dimmer keypad that controls my kitchen lights. When it's done, you can see all the links that were defined by HomeSeer so it can control the device and respond to button clicks. The Edit Settings button is where I can set the LED brightness and the default on level as well as the ramp rate for each one of my devices. Hopefully you're beginning to see the value of the MNS Insteon plugin for HomeSeer and that it's worth the price. All right, the last device I need to add is the leak sensor, and I'm going to use the number on the leak sensor. And when I click Add Device, I'm going to have to push the button to get it to communicate. So it's going to sit here waiting, and I have to push this button, and that's all you have to do. So it knows that it's my leak sensor, and it is programming the device. So where is my leak sensor? There it is. Device 7 location, leak sensor. Okay, when I go to devices here, you can see the leak sensor should be added. And it automatically knows that it is a leak sensor because it has not only the leak sensor, but it also has the heartbeat. Here you can see the values of the leak sensor. When it's zero, that means it's dry. And when it turns to 100, that means it's wet. It's detecting water. And uh, that's how that works. So that's a wireless device set up now. So the next thing I want to cover is the concept of Insteon groups. These are also known as scenes. In the old Insteon app, you used to, they were called scenes. And what they were is you identified a controller and a number of devices that could be controlled by that controller. So click one button and multiple devices would turn on. And that happens instantaneously. They all go on together. And that's directly from Insteon devices. It doesn't use any kind of a hub whatsoever. So even if your home seer hub is offline, these will continue to work. So to add a group, and I'll show you what I'm going to use that for, is my kitchen cabinets. I have the three lamp link dimmers right here. These are all going to be in that scene. I want to be able to turn on on these simultaneously because they're my kitchen cabinets, right? So all three of those are going to go on at the same time and I want to turn them on with my kitchen keypad button C. And I also want to put button C from this kitchen keypad as well as the one in the island keypad. I want both button C's to go on with this scene. So that way everything will be in sync. Whenever the cabinets are on, those two buttons are on. And I've got this controlled by the kitchen keypad button C. Now I'm gonna save changes. It's gonna take a minute. It's gonna write all those links out to these devices. And, uh, and like I said, once it's up and running, you just click the button and they all go on together. It's a wonderful thing. And what it actually does here is it sends out, you can see it's programming a link for group one in each one of these devices. And then when the kitchen keypad sends out a notice that says, okay, everybody, group one, turn on. 
everybody looks in their link database and they say, oh, I'm in group one, let me turn on to whatever the setting was, whatever the brightness level was. So it, it's really cool technology. Okay, and if I go back to groups, you'll see it's here. I didn't give it a name, I should give it a name. I'm gonna call it cabinets. Oh, I can't give it a name here? I can't rename it? Oh, that stinks. I should have put that in at the time. Anyway, the other thing that it does, let's, so it's called new group. Homeseer also creates a device called a group controller. And you can see it here, new group, group controller. Well, of course, this is gonna be my kitchen cabinets. And this is Insteon, and it's in the kitchen. Good enough. Now I've got my group controller. Where did I put it? I bet you it's in alphabetical order. It is. So here's my cabinet scene. It's a group controller, right? And so I can turn them on and off with this group controller. And notice all of them went off at the same time. And now I'm going to turn it on. And they all go on at the same time. And in fact, if we look at the keypads, you can see button C is lit here and button C is lit here. So they're all in that same group. Works great. Now I can also control them through an event. I'm going to go into a schedule event and I'm going to create one that at 7 a.m. I want my kitchen cabinet lights to go on. Now, when you say control a device here, you can see the group controller, cabinet scene group controller. And I'm just gonna say, turn that on, 7 a.m. Save that. And that will make them all go on instantaneously at 7 a.m. And now I also have a previous schedule at 10.30. So 10.30 p.m., I turn off my hallway, my hallway bulb and my loft bulb, those are Z-Wave devices, but I'm gonna edit this. And I'm gonna also add my cabinet scene. I want that to go off as well. Save that, it's that simple. And now tonight at 10.30, all those lights will go off, including my kitchen cabinets. That's exactly the way that I want it. Now there's one other group that I create, and that is a reciprocal arrangement between two keypads. So I have a kitchen keypad and I have a, an island keypad, and I want to be able to control, say for example, my kitchen lights from either location. So I'm gonna call this, now remember, you can't rename this after the fact, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna call it, just gonna call it kitchen lights. And the controller on this is gonna be the kitchen keypad button A. So that's the one that actually turns on the ceiling lights. And what do I need in that? Well, I need my button A. And the reason why I put this in here is because if you use the group controller, you want that button A light to go on, right? And I don't know if it does or not. So I put it in there, it doesn't hurt it. And so it's not only a controller, but it's also a responder. And again, this is, this is terminology that was used in the previous app. And I'm also gonna put my island keypad, oh, not button A, because then it would turn them both on. I want button B, okay? So button B and my island keypad will also control my kitchen lights like they're a three-way switch. And that is gonna save those changes. Now all that did was make it that when I turn on the kitchen keypad button A, it turns on button B over on the island keypad, but I can't actually control them from the island keypad yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, let me go back to groups. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna say copy. And it creates a copy, but I'm gonna call this kitchen lights from island keypad okay and i'm going to say i want this to be controlled by button b on the island and i'm going to leave these the same okay and then i'm going to create that i'm going to do the same thing but i'm going to do it in the opposite direction so i'm going to create a new group and I'm gonna call this one island 
scene. I should have called it island scene from their kitchen scene. But either way, this time I'm going to call it island scene and it's going to be the opposite. So this time it's when I press the A button on the island, I want the B button in the kitchen. And I know they're the opposite buttons and sometimes that drives people nuts, but this is the only way to do it, honestly. So island keypad A has kitchen keypad B and island keypad A both in there. So I am going to create this and then I'm going to create a duplicate. All right, now in my groups, I have my island scene. I'm going to click copy. And then I'm going to say island scene from kitchen. And it's the same scene. All it is is a different controller and it's going to be button B in the kitchen. Okay, that creates the kitchen island scene from kitchen. So let's look at the groups again. Kitchen or island scene and island scene from kitchen. So these are two different groups, two different controllers, but the same devices are in the groups and the same thing with the kitchen lights. Although I need to change that to kitchen scene. Now with my cabinet scene, remember I said the kitchen keypad button C was the controller for it. Well, and, and I had both C buttons in the group. Well, I need it to be controlled from both C buttons. So there's two ways to go about that. I could either copy this group or I can create an event. So I'm going to create a new group here and I'm going to call this keypad. Okay. And in there it creates a new, new event by default. So I'm going to call this new event cabinets from island button C. And I'm going to call it on. In this case, I'm going to use an Insteon trigger here when a button transmits an on command. So that will be from the island button C. When that transmits an on command, that's what's going to trigger this event. And I'm going to say here, control a device, and I'm going to choose my cabinet scene group controller. And I'm going to say, turn that on. And that's it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change it like this. I'm going to say it to off. This is the copy. And I'm just going to say when it transmits an off command, I'm going to turn the group controller off. And that's it. Now I've got two scenes that control the cabinets from island button C. One turns them on, one turns them off. And that's it. So this will actually require home seer for it to work, right? This is a home seer event and it will have a slight delay to it when I press button C from the island keypad. The other way to do it is to go in here into my group. I could say copy this scene. If I copy this scene and I make the other keypad the controller for that copied scene, then it would work instantaneously. So it's two alternatives. You could do either way. It doesn't matter. I'm going to add another event and I'm going to call this island button H. When island button H is on, okay, my island keypad is actually in the hallway. So I want this, this event. If I click button H in the hallway, I want that light to go on. Okay. So this says, if I press button H on my hallway keypad or my, I shouldn't say my hallway keypad, but it's my island keypad, which happens to be in my hallway. You can actually see the Z-Wave bulb, the hall bulb from this keypad. So that's why I want button H on here to control that. So when somebody clicks button H, it turns that bulb on. Now I want to copy it. I want to do the same thing for off. Okay, this event is called island button H off. And if button H transmits an off signal, it then turns the Z-Wave bulb off. 
But there are other ways that I control my Z-Wave bulb. I have some events that also control the Z-Wave bulb. So let's see. I know they go on at dusk, right? There, turns on at dusk. So what do I want to do? I want to add in here. I want another device to go on. I want button H to go on so it always stays in sync with that hall bulb. Now this timer, which is set for dusk, will turn all these things on, including button H. And that's what I want. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the one at 1030. I want to make sure that I turn off button H. Okay, hopefully you guys are getting this. It's not that hard, but you just have to think in terms of when something happens, that's the if part, when something happens, then do something else. And you can do as many of these things as you want. So here I'm just controlling all these devices, just turning them off. But I have my wall mode turning on that hall bulb as well. And I did that in the previous video. So I need to make sure that if I do that, I'm also going to turn on button H. Because again, I want them always in sync. Now when I click switch number one on the wall mode, it turns on the hall bulb and it turns on button H. Similarly, I need to go to the off. And I need to add it there too. All right, guys, I think this video has gone on long enough. And that's really what I wanted to show you. Those were all the capabilities that I use in the MNS Insteon plugin. There could be other capabilities there that I haven't even scratched the surface with. I don't know. But these are the things that I used in my test. It's exactly how I set up my Homeseer server with this plugin to control my devices for my testing. And uh, I think it works great. I think it's an awesome solution. I have looked into some others, but I find this one to be the most user-friendly. But uh, did I leave anything out? Can you think of anything else? Remember, go to the forum, the Homeseer forum for the Insteon plugin. I'll put that link down in the video description. And please give this video a thumbs up because you stuck around all this time, so I really deserve it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.